today I'm going to share with you one of my most favorite recent patterns called the Sagebrush Top, Top. <laughs> by Friday, Friday Pattern Company. Um, when I tested this pattern, I had a major freak out because first of all, it's gorgeous. Second of all, it was so easy to make. Third of all, when I put it on, I instantly fell in love and I could picture like 5,000 different versions. So here we go. The first version I made da, 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 was this quilting cotton version. Um, this is an art gallery fabrics quilting cotton and it um, has good body but it's still soft. Um, I have recently fallen back in love with quilting cottons and I think I'm going to do a video soon on um, pattern suggestions for quilting cottons because they're pretty cheap for the most part and they have the most beautiful prints. So this was my first version. Easy peasy, so easy to sew with all the quilting um, cotton great qualities that it comes with. Easy to press, it doesn't slide around, etc, etc. So this was a great version. Love the poofy sleeves. And this was my very first version. But this video is going to be about how I made this pattern two different ways. So this is number one, and I'm gonna show you a couple of pictures of that right now. So before I talk about the next version, which you got a sneak peek of right here, um, I want to explain some more details of the pattern. So it's got a yoke piece here, a yoke piece in the back, um, and then it has this bias tape around that you make from the actual fabric, and it ties in the back, has a little opening here, and this is basically how you get it over your head. Um, these sleeves are very easy, very gathered sleeves. Um, and then, yeah, this part's really easy as well. So, and this is pretty much straight down. So those are the details of the pattern. Love it, love it, love it, love it, love it. And so let me show you the other version I made. So when I saw this pattern, I thought to myself, if I make this into a dress, I think it would be really cool really vintage but it would have kind of a nightgown feel like vintage nightgown feel and at first i was like mm, i don't know if i'm gonna like that and i'm like wait a minute while i'm thinking about that option why don't i just make a nightgown <laughs> and then i'm like okay do i want it out of cotton what kind of cotton do i want it out of or do I want it? Um, do I want it to be in a woven fabric? Is basically what I was asking myself. Or do I want it to be in jersey? And so I decided to do jersey, and it is the softest jersey I've ever felt in my whole life, which is not that long. <laughs> um, but that was a wink, by the way, in case you couldn't see it. Um, it is so soft. It's this modal viscose jersey um, from Lamazi Fabrics in London and she has some more colorways and I did order some more. I think she said the other colorways are a little bit thinner than this one um, but I'm not for sure. Whenever I get that fabric in I'm going to do a fabric haul about it but it's beautiful. almost feels like a um, like a double knit or um, a ponte but, but way more drapey than a, than a ponte. So oh uh, I was like, every time I felt this fabric, I was like, I need a really comfortable t-shirt or something I can sleep in. And so when I thought about doing knit and when I remembered this fabric, I was like, these two have to go together. So obviously the details of the pattern are a little bit different. The sleeves are still really poofy. I made this tight enough, this elastic, but not super tight to where it wouldn't like be uncomfortable when I'm sleeping, sleeping, but I wanted it tight enough to where it would kind of stay so that the sleeve could still be poofy. Cause you know, I want to look pretty when I'm sleeping. And um, really in reality, I'm like a super old 
grandma that gets her pajamas on at like five o'clock if I can. I take a shower and have my pajamas on. If that's possible, I will do it. So now I can look cute for like the four or five hours I stay awake until I go to bed. Um, and so the only changes I made um, during construction was I put some um, stabilizing tape here because I knew that this fabric was kind of heavy. So on the back shoulder seam, before I stitched it together, I placed some stabilizing tape. Let me pull it out. I've talked about this in um, a video um, with my favorite sewing tools, but it is the Design Plus Bias Fusible Tape. It's not stretchy, but it doesn't really need to be stretchy because everything else is so stretchy. Um, it stretches a tiny bit, but not as much as this. So this is stable. It won't stretch. It won't sag. I didn't want it to pull and things like that. Um, so I did that. Then I briefly thought about the neckline. I thought the bias um, neckline really didn't need to be there. I could have just closed this up and cut this yoke piece as one piece on the fold, but I'd have to take off this hem allowance here because um, there's like a little hem going uh, vertically. Um, I thought about removing that, just making it a plain yoke and making like a t-shirt ne neck band for it. Um, but then I changed my mind because this is one of the details I love about this shirt and I really wanted it in my nightgown. Now, a lot of you are probably thinking, um, does that hurt to lay on <laughs> because it's a knot and you're laying on it? No, I don't even notice it to be honest at all. I, it doesn't bother me, but if it is gonna bother you, then I would suggest doing what I was talking about earlier. Um, and I'm actually really surprised at how stable and great this sewed up on the neckband portion but this probably was the most scary for me because I was so worried it was going to be wobbly or weird or wrinkly but it looks beautiful so that's the advantage I think of using a knit with a little bit of body even if it is viscose I don't know if it's super thin if it will behave this well um, if you really are determined to use a super thin viscose knit for this kind of thing, you could either just do a regular neckband and close the back up, or you could um, reinforce the, the neckband um, uh, bias tape by adding some like fusible knit um, tape. I have some. Let me grab it real quick. So this is called Heat and Bond Soft Stretch, and you could totally put that inside of here, and it would make it a lot more stable, a lot easier to sew with. So you could do that as well. Um, the other thing is, I pretty much surged all the seams. Um, I, I did based on the sleeve before I surged it, just because I wanted the gathers to look really pretty, so I just kind of visualized them before I basted it on. Um, but I surged the side seams just like I would for any kind of knit shirt. I did not surge this on. When I was making this part, I just stitched it on like a regular seam. Um, I basted and then I stitched. And when I surged it, I had a little bit of trouble because... Sometimes if you st barely stretch your fabric, or if your fabric's heavy and it's hanging off your serger and it's kind of pulling, it'll make the seam wavy. And so it was a little bit, actually a lot more wavy than this. I ended up cutting the whole seam off, um, serger part and everything instead of ripping it out and doing it again because it was way too wavy. It's still a little bit wavy, but when I have it on, it, it rests beautifully and it's not really a big deal. Um, but just be careful with that seam. I could have used some of this and that probably would have helped a lot. Um, but yeah, I just stitched everything slowly and once everything looked really good, then I surged the edge just to have a clean finish. But if it's knit, you don't need to because it won't run. So um, you don't even have to do that. In fact, that might have be what might have been what really messed it up and made it wavy. Um, I did change my serger thread. As you can see, there's serger thread on the inside and it matches. Um, I wanted to do that because I still wanted it to look nice. Uh, the most important thing I haven't talked about yet is I obviously made it longer. All I did was I held up the shirt 
to my body and I saw where it ended um, and I knew I was going to do probably about the same type of hem, maybe a little bit smaller of a hem. So I just went from the hem of the actual shirt that I made down to where I wanted it to be on my legs and I measured that distance and it was about 16 inches. So all I did was draw a straight line <laughs> on both sides and cut it at 16 inches longer and this is what I got. Um, and then I just did a tiny little hem. I just folded it up one time and stitched it. So obviously that is the most important part of the hack and I should have mentioned it at the beginning. But, um, so I did that to make it longer. The other thing is that I didn't pin a lot. This um, fabric did not respond well to pinning, even when I had um, ballpoint pins, like the ones that are better for knit fabrics. So I used, when I needed it, I used these little clips and I have this little container I put them in. It didn't come with that or anything. But yeah, I just used sewing clips and I didn't pin anything. So I did that different as well. Um, other than that, I want to live in it. It is my best friend. I love it so much and it's so comfortable. I try not to wear it every single night, but I really want to. Um, and so that uh, was a beautiful, wonderful, no regrets make. Um, the other thing is I wanted to possibly make a dress one day. And so I wanted to show you guys this fabric. If I was going to make a dress, this is fabric that I was thinking about using. Very drapey, very much the opposite of what my shirt looks like. Um, and I was going to possibly make it a dress, maybe put like a bottom ruffle on it or, um, put a bottom ruffle and like a little elastic at the waistline so I could define my waist. So I was thinking about all those things and how pretty that would be. But yeah, so I might also do that and make the pattern a third time because why not? Anyways, um, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you got um, lots of ideas and inspiration from it. If you have any questions, let me know or if you just wanna say hi, leave a comment below. If you like this video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up if you can, because that will help other people find it. Um, if you really like the video and you want to see more, go ahead and hit the subscribe button down below and the notification bell so you can be notified when I have another video. Um, anyways, that's all. I hope you're having a great day. Bye.